Hey you gang, we are at a location in the Forest Preserve called Robinson Woods, right? Robinson Woods? And we came out here today because we wanted to tie up a little bit of a loose end on one of, one of my first, very first episodes when I started the channel about the murder of three boys. It was Anton Jr., John Schusler, and Bobby Peterson, who was a little older, by this creep named Kenneth Hansen. And I really wanted to see the murder location, well, where the bodies were dumped. The murder location is to the north up uh, Cumberland and Higgins, where the Idle Hour stables used to be. Anyway, you can go to this link, you can watch the whole story. We went to their graves, but I really wanted to see where this happened. And one thing I'll mention is one of our friends, Red Wimmett. Yeah, Red. Red's got a channel. Red actually is the one who put this killer away. I think he went to Pontiac Prison to serve the rest of his life there before he died. Let's take a walk. Show us Britain where, where these boys were found. October 1955. Now this was, uh, this was a crime scene that had investigators and journalists from all over the Chicago land that descended upon it after a trucker discovered the boys' bodies. But from the photograph, which is an aerial shot, there used to be a there used to be a ditch line that ran through here, and just beyond where it starts to descend here, out of the way of the trees where the three bodies were found, piled up on top of one another. So literally right here. Wow, it's chilling just to see this. We're right next to the river here. Desplaines River. This is the Desplaines River. And we're just east of O'Hare Airport. You can hear the jets taking off. Beautiful little spot here. Sure. But so right where these picnic tables are practically, now you can go, you guys can go online, you can see, well, you're going to see the pictures in my initial video. You know, I was just starting out and trying to show everything, and I, I actually wouldn't show these pictures today. They're really graphic, and I don't even care about getting demonetized. It's really just about right over the flight path here, over here. Yeah. Is that a Cessna Caravan? No, it's a twin. But yeah, it's you can you can go you can if you want to see it, it it's horrible and the reporters are like stepping right over the bodies, like let's just trample up the crime scene. I mean, it's probably the best example of how newspaper men or the public how they wouldn't protect crime scenes. Of course, they didn't have DNA and all that good stuff back then. So I don't know anything else to add. Back at that time, the journalists were allowed, newspaper people were allowed to come right in when the police were doing their initial investigation until forensics came along where you could actually rope off a crime scene and deter anybody who was not with authorities from coming in. The macabre part, you know, the morbid part, if you analyze the photographs of the boys' bodies, which, the, which are all over online, the black and white pictures of their bodies piled on top of one another, this actually played a huge part in the prosecution of the suspect who was arrested. And Kenneth Hansen. Sentenced. Yeah, Kenneth Hansen. Uh, on the boys' naked bodies, you could see markings. Uh, you could see abuse that they endured, but you could also see markings from what detectives later put together to be from a floor mat from like a right. late 1940s model Packard. And they, years later, were able to trace that Packard to Myth Mr. Hansen and another gentleman by the name of Silas Jane, who... The mastermind. Yeah, the mastermind, one of the most evil the boss. men to exist around here at the time. Yeah, I did a three-part series, actually. It, Silas Jane, the horse syndicate, Helen Brock, how they put her in the, the Gary Steel Mills and reduced her down, put her in the molten kettle. Anyway, uh, back to just a quick note on Red Wimmett. Go to his channel, Bedtime Stories. You could probably get on a lot. He's live streaming all the time. If you want to get on there, and you could probably ask him any question on this. He was, he was in the, he was back then in involved with these guys. He was there. He put Ken Hansen away. 
and he's got some crazy stories and he's still rocking and rolling so all right just wanted to tie up this loose end and we'll catch you guys later